enough time has gone by that we're starting to see some symptoms of what people are going to be undergoing after they get get better from COVID. Symptoms being um, like continued shortness of breath and coughing and chest pains and fatigue and anxiety, depression. Um, those things are actually common with many, many viruses. But what hasn't happened is that we haven't had enough time to know what different body parts are going to be actually damaged and what effect that's going to have on people in the long term. Um, and then we are, we, you know, we have that one study that looked at 100 people who had recovered from COVID and did MRI scans on their heart, um, which showed that 79 of them showed signs of heart damage. Um, which was independent of how ill they got. So some of those people were asymptomatic and had very, very mild symptoms, yet still showed damage on their MRI scans. And we don't know if that damage is going to go away or if it's going to just be permanent and continue on for that person um, for the rest of their life. When you hear on the news that it's 80% mild, that really doesn't tell you what could be happening um, to people who aren't experiencing symptoms. And I tell people, it's just something you don't want to get. We just don't know enough about it to say that it's okay to just get it and move on. Really want to try to avoid it if you can. RLF 100 looks really exciting. Um, it's a medication that's actually been around for uh, over 20 years. It's a, a synthetic peptide that is something that we uh, already have in high concentrations in our lungs and in our GI tract. And um, the claim is that it decreases the virus's ability to replicate in the lung cells and also decreases the body's um, ability to produce cytokines. So it kind of reaches both of um, the problems that COVID is causing in people. And uh, it's it currently got fast-tracked by the FDA in, um, in June. So it's uh, already in use in clinical two and three trials as an IV medication in severely ill patients in the hospital. Um, but the exciting thing is that in July, it got granted emergency use by the FDA um, for severely ill patients in the hospital. And some of the results of that are coming back now. So. Um, in late July, they started giving it IV to very, very ill patients. And then just uh, weeks later, we saw um, really good results. So for example, the first patient was a 54-year-old man who um, had a double lung transplant, was undergoing treatment for, um, for his lung transplant when he got COVID and um, was on a ventilator. And after four days of IV use of this medication, he was off the ventilator. So that's really encouraging. And then um, subsequently, 15 more patients were um, reported to have um, similar effects and um, even improvement in their x-rays, which is really great. So, um, so that's for the IV use in, uh, in hospitalized patients, but they're also uh, just received uh, approval to start their um, phase two, three clinical trial for inhaled medication. So that would be for mild to severe patients. So that's really exciting. And that's going to start in September. And so um, I'm excited. <laughs> Stanford developed its in-house test, the PCR test, in March. And um, I personally remember <laughs> when they did the first test because it was in the parking lot of the Hoover Pavilion. We started um, with nine tests. We did nine people on the first day. And that was really, really exciting. Um, it was March 9th. And now we're up to 145,000 tests that they've done. So that's, that's super exciting. So we're, they're testing um, first responders and um, of course all our patients and local skilled nursing facilities. Who else? That's it. <laughs> yeah, we, all, we have drive-through tests now in, um, in all the Bay Area and plans to, to increase um, we just got received FDA or authorization to start pooling samples, which means um, the, the lab is basically going to run four samples at a time. So they're going to pick low-risk patients, patients who are 
unlikely to be positive and pool them together and run those tests at once. So um, they could do four to eight tests at one time. And then if one of those tests comes back negative, then they have to rerun all of them and um, individually. But that's a way to quadruple our capacity over the next couple months. You know, um, honestly, the thing that gets me up in the morning are the studies that were done on patients um, wearing masks. So showing, they tested people who had different viruses, like RSV, influenza, coronavirus, wearing a mask and seeing how much of that virus stays inside the mask. And specifically coronavirus stays in more than the other viruses. So like RSV, um, the flu, those escape a little bit more than coronavirus mostly stays in and the little viral particles that do escape don't look like they go much further than six feet. So for that, we are lucky and I'm so grateful because we really can prevent the spread if we wear our masks and just stay out of that six feet foot radius of each other for a while. Um, and then it will get better.